Hello and welcome. This is ILBC Feedback and Friends. Right at this moment, we have sunny skies and back of Visa with me. And um, I thought we'd start um, the night off with a track I started working on recently um, called Flickering Waning Moon. Um, it's going to be the start of a new album that I'm working on, and um, we'll see how um, that ends up because I've this is the only track that's actually got any real completion to it so far. Um, but, I mean, let's just start out with a bit of a different thing. How about you two roast me? Ah, uh, your face. Uh, whatever you <laughs> want, I guess. Roast the song, roast me. Not if you want to face. get really. I'm just going to get real mean with it. <laughs> Headphones more like helmet. You go into the army with those things? Oh god! Yeah, Bluetooth earbuds. <laughs> uh, actually, do you want to get a pair of uh, in-ear monitors? Um, uh, my opinion on that track's really pretty, super nice. It sounds like it's about something like super important to you. Like you got a lot of emotion in those chords, and you're really expressing yourself very well. Uh, I think the mix is pretty good. Um, I didn't hear anything that really stuck out to me. I think it's a really, really awesome first track for your album. Thank you. That was very nice. Sunny, can you be I didn't realize that was your song that was playing. That makes a lot more sense, you know, the context. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the track. I 100% could have fallen asleep to that. So if that was what you were going for, that definitely worked. Like, um, what was the name for it again? Flickering Waning Moon. That That's definitely fitting. I was like, it was something space-themed, and songs like that with that ethereal atmosphere and that really full sound... I think really, really do fit the space theme. Either that or like an underwater um, submarine going through like a coral reef kind of vibe is kind well, of what I got in my is, head. It's a little bit of both. Some, like in terms of, um, well, basically thematically and narratively, there is a water component to it, which I will be expressing in visuals and stuff. So you aren't too cool. far off in that Ooh. regard. I, it yeah. sounds very cinematic, so that makes sense. Then you definitely mm. delivered the right message if I picked up on that, because I'm pretty dense. I think it yeah. needs more cowbell, though. It might. I mean, um, I could actually <laughs> do some... A good 808. A good yeah. 808. Some I mean, distorted kick going on in there. Some... That drop, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you should just throw a really gnarly growl in there as well. I mean, um, I, I don't think we'll go that far. <laughs> <laughs> And what, what you need is a melo melodica. Oh yeah, a melodica would be sweet. <laughs> there you go. You got your, your melodica. So, um, yeah, this... I've got it sitting here in case I need it. Mm. I heard the, the guitar in the background for some reason. Why? All right. Um, I'm not sure why social stream isn't showing up right now, but I mean, um, yeah, I don't mind myself. Er, 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 er. It's meant to. Why does everything break the minute you try and do anything? All right. While we're live, mind you, how could you do this? You why see, there's could another you do this? For you. Um. Anyway, so, um, provided. Let's see if somebody's actually DM'd me link because the first person was meant to be. Um. Yes, please. But he's obviously. Um, still rendering. So, we're going to skip ahead for a minute to Nathan Van Denberg, who ha is a friend of the show, and apparently this is an attempt at some uh, Deep House stuff. Cool. Um, so we'll Gotta see love how some that... Deep House. Yeah. This is Amazing by Nathan Van Denberg. Very quiet intro. Comes from the glass, stretching out with the 35 and fast, looking at my gray hairs and laugh. This fight's been so amazing, still got my fam, I'm so blessed. Sending crazy memes to my friends, do what I love with.
<laughs> All right, so that that last bit looks like it's just silence. Um, the so was did you either of you two find that song amazing? Which is I swear it's Isha's favorite word. If you're watching, hi Isha, yes, I love you. Yes, absolutely, and but of course. <laughs> so um. Who would like to give go first with giving some constructive feedback on this track? Sunny or Bako? Here, rock, it's... paper, scissors? No, you go first. Alright, Sunny, you go first. Alright. Um, Deep, Deep House kicking off with a rappy feel and very organy pads. Um, I've used the organy pads before, and I really like them organy. That's a new word. Um, the bass rhythm is something that I find a lot of people struggle with in this genre, and you've got a really groovy bass rhythm it's not exactly on beat it's kind of like a little offset and i really enjoy the way you captured that and made it fit in so well with the rest of the uh the song um the chord progression was do do and then i think it was a lower one do do you didn't have it playing through the entire time but it was there and i could hear it um the big thing or uh, something i would like to hear actually if you wanted to try and um get transitions better, or improve them anyways. Uh, the trumpet, if you could have it reverse into itself when it first came in, it was like, oh, when it first came in, um, maybe hint to it being there. That might help your tra uh, track progress a little nicer. Otherwise, I can't really think of anything else to give you, man. You, you've done really well on this song. Yeah, I have to agree with Sunny Skies. Uh, mix overall is really, really tight. Um, your low end is good. <clears throat> There's a little bit of masking on the vocals from the low end, but I think you could just boost the presence. So like 2 to 4K, somewhere in there, will be the vocals presence. Find a spot there that cuts through the mix. Give it a little bit of a boost, and that would help. Um, I think transitions need a little bit of extra zhuzh, but that's about it, man. That was a really solid track. That was really nice. I mean, um, I think that one thing that might help with the vocals pushing through is actually just to create a version of them that's form and shifted slightly up. And, that's um, also a really you know, good just idea. Just yeah. parallel process that and mix it, you know, like a dry wet thing and get it bounce right that way, and that might help it just sit edge on a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, find those little spots that it can squeeze through. Yeah, um, but good, good start to the stream, I think. So um, yeah, thank solid you very track. Much that was that. really good for sure. Um, next up, we're in, I will be getting to Yes Please is one in a minute because he just DM'd me his link. But next up, we actually have a track here by Sunny Skies. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about this one? Since you have a description, but you're here. So, so last week I'd mentioned that I was working on a Psytrance song and that I was actually working on artwork, animated artwork for this one. Um, this is a genre I've never worked in before. Trance is not something I've found very much to get uh, success in. I've found more success in progressive. So I decided to take myself out of my element and make something new. Big things about this track are I don't really know my sound selection for this genre. A lot of sounds are placeholders. Uh, Psytrance is usually characterized by a very, and I mean very clean uh, bass, the point where you turn off the randomization and the um, oscillator and you actually sample it so it's the exact same time every single time and even even with the processing you resample that thing so you have that hit the exact same it needs to be the exact same i didn't do that <laughs> you'll hear that whenever um the track plays well i guess um, you'll have that'll be your next place to work from then yeah um, i actually plan to have that really clean bass come in during the drop along with some trumpet hits um, the synths in the drop are kind of a placeholder right now. I'm trying to get a feel for the genre, so looking for any suggestions if anyone knows. In the description, I included a link to something I had uploaded for a reference. So if since it's a very niche genre, if you want to play that at the end so people have an idea what the genre usually sounds like, that would be I mean, really um, appreciated. I'm not sure how that will play with um, copyright stuff, so we'll... Um, who's it by? Like, what is it? Um, it is... I think it is public domain. Let me check just to be sure, though. Okay, well, we'll play your track, and you can check that in the meantime, and we'll see how it goes. Um, this is The Black Tower by Sunny Skies. <laughs>
UA um, side so I, I liked the second bit the most out of the whole track. Like once you started have playing with those sort of the whistle sounds and the grittier bass sound, um, I, I think that, that it really started to click for me, what you were trying to do. The second bit after the piano um, yeah, break, the, um, after the here once the bass starts se- jumping and. I have no idea what that is. That's a. SoundCloud, stop <laughs> it. Bad. Bad SoundCloud. Um, and obviously, I know you said some of the sounds are placeholders, but I also don't think the ones that you chose are necessarily bad. I mean, um. It's more just um, some of your stereo control in your intro is kind of off. And um, I feel like you have to go, you know, take that last bit and then use that to inform your first bit. You know, like you've kind of written a really awesome part of a song. And then the other bit is kind of like it doesn't reference it at all because you kind of just kept going and then you just changed it up. You're talking about when the drop hits? Yeah, I feel like the drop is a... Like, you know, it's better than the intro by a lot. Alright, so I'm probably going to want to reference the the drop and maybe hint more during throughout as I progress the beginning of the track. Yeah. And, yeah, just um, like take one section or one piece of the section from it and try to integrate it into the intro and that would help a lot. Alright. And what do you think about doing the really clean Psytrance bass? It uh for the drop to especially bring out that variation i'm actually removing elements to make the drop more interesting uh yeah i think you did a good job on that other than the fact that i think i would look at the timings of um the drums and the bass they need to be tightened up a little bit a really good program that i like to use is wave observer pro well i have the pro version it's like five dollars if you get it on patreon but it's free there's a free version of it it just shows it's basically an oscilloscope but it like you can literally see where the waveforms like start and end so that you can make sure that they're all clearly individual hits and you get them like going through the mix really nicely um and then that intro is way too loud um I'm not sure what happened. It was like really over compressed at the beginning and then it was fine. So I'm not sure if you automated the compression or if the beginning is just way louder than the other portion going into the uh, limiter or con- uh, compressors that you have set up. Um, but I would definitely I think I just had a that. lot of stuff in the beginning. I need to remove Yeah, it might some be just, things, just too much sure. stuff. I would really go with a sparse intro, um, taking some kind of element from the drop and uh, using that as your introduction to the, the main core of the, the song. But other than that, it, it sounds like it's going to be a really, really awesome track when you when you uh, nail down all the little tiny details. Gotcha. I mean, um, let's some other comments in the chat here are interesting. I mean, um, Torvu thinks the bass is a bit overpowering, um, and he thinks the <laughs> think drums the definitely need okay. to cut through as well. Um, but generally, I thought uh, like so far, um, at least there's some positive comments as well. Clowns in the hollow weird. Hello. Um, said that um, it's a banger once you fix the opening. So that's um, really cool. Um, also, sorry, So the big area I need to look at is the opening. Yes. Um, also, and the um, ending was a little abrupt. I don't think it's finished. That's the thing. I, I oh, feel it's like not finished. It's, okay, that makes sense. I, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not done yet. <laughs> um, so, I mean, um, also, hello to Jaskabo. Um, you know, nice to see you in chat as well. Um Tell your friends that we're on stream. Everybody, that is your order. Also, before we move on to Yes Please's next track, like oh, yeah. um, he said something in, I want to show off some technological advancement. This is my Samsung tablet running the overlay for the music player right now. Ooh, let's go. Fancy. No more autoplay? Oh, no, I don't know about autoplay. I can't stop that. Um, <laughs> it was just... Um, Basically, it's just running as an external screen over my Wi-Fi, um, giving me extra screen space. And I've got it. I mean, it looks nice. It's easier to do than just having my big ultra wide chopped up because that just doesn't look quite right. Um, so this is an upgrade. Um, we have Shiver by Yes Please. Um, I can't remember if they said something useful about this one. Because they were first, and I, f- I think it was something about making a sexy track? 
<laughs> yeah. Shooting for hot, sexy vibes, and I want to know if I hit my mark. Okay, everybody. Um, it looks like it's about to get steamy in here. This is Shiver by Yes Please. I like that combo. So that was Shiver by Yes Please. Um, did that sound like a sexy fun time to either of you two? Well, it's the got vocals? some really dissonant chords. So if you're going sea bat sexy, then I guess you're getting there. Um, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I just I... really wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're. You might want to think about using a different kind of instrumentation, like. That sounds like a really amazing Neo Soul track. Like, if you get some, like, old school, like, boom bap style drums with, like, um, like a piano or, like, a guitar over that, like, you, that would, like, just melt the panties off every single person that listened to it. Um, <laughs> uh, I really, really like the vocals. Is that you on the Vox? Um, um, that is him on the vocals, yeah. He's... Yeah, because those vocals are really good. Um, I think the production on the instrumentation side needs a little, like, uh, it needs like a, a more foundational like 
concept because it sounds sort of sparse and sounds sort of like I'm not sure what I'm doing, so I'm just going to put some stuff here. Um, so I think th having a really good think about that would help a lot. I mean, um, while I wouldn't necessarily suggest changing the entire instrumentation, I think what doesn't is there could be refined. Like um, right now, that 808 bass sound does not hit hard enough. Like. I feel like if you're going to use that, you want it to be so prominent and crunchy and sort of crispy that we feel the sub and it, you make people wet themselves with the sub. <laughs> like, you know, which maybe that isn't quite such a dramatic image, but... <laughs> I mean, um, the other thing I think uh, people are pointing out that the um, chord synths, they don't, they lack some presence, I agree. Um, trying to think of how I might make them have more presence. I mean, uh, maybe it's just a case of just simple layering stuff. Um, but it could also be I think the a fact pluck that would also... nice. I mean, yeah, maybe. But it's also, I think they're very dry on the whole. They're sort of like bwah, 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 bwah. There's no delay on them. There's no obvious reverb on them. They're just sort of um, really subtle. And, um, I mean... I feel like some post-processing could be done on them to richen them up a bit, you know? And I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that it, they don't do a lot spatially. Um, oh, you're making comments in the chat too. I was going to read out your Well, I just don't want to interrupt you while you're talking. But yeah, I think uh, if you're going for sparse, definitely instrumentation needs to really sing a lot. Like... You need something really expressive in order to counterbalance those vocals because if you just sort of have like dry midi sounding instrumentation then it's gonna it just it doesn't like mix well so like um yeah so like guitars and pianos are really good because you can do really awesome chord progressions that just like make people feel things and you can also play them so that they actually like are expressive and um can emote like a singer um so yeah that's my main suggestion so what you're saying is melodica. Yeah, absolutely. Melodica. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have yeah, any. Yeah, I, I would totally love to work with these vocals if you have any interest, but I, I don't want to just come on here and steal the vocals off everyone's track. <laughs> is that going to be your trademark? Yeah, I'm always looking for vocals constantly, 100% of the time, always. I have, like, an entire EP that needs it. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, um, well, as I mean, uh, for me, Sunny. Um, I don't really know how to feel about the very staccato bass hits. Um, I didn't even realize you had a kick until halfway through the song. Um, I know a lot of things that people do in this genre is the 808 is your kick, but I, 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 I genuinely couldn't tell there there was a normal kick in there as well until halfway through the song. Um. The drums themselves also feel a little buried, like the hi-hats and stuff. They're there, but they kind of feel overshadowed. They don't really have much of a presence to them. Another interesting thought, they thought about putting texture to your chords. I was thinking, not Rhodes, I want to say, but some really thin piano. Like uh, if you put like a, a radio EQ on the piano to make it really thin, you could have it play with some note uh, velocity variation and like a, a trim not a tremolo you don't do tremolos on piano you do but it's weird um a strum a strum on the pianos and this is gonna sound crazy but some down sample distortion very light down sample distortion on that piano like you've got pressure. that like upwards tingly like that belly sound that you get with the down sample distortion as well and i think that would be really interesting to add to your chords Sounds a good suggestion. What do you guys think? I'd agree with that. Um, definitely humanizing the instrumentation would help a lot. And strumming is one of the things, like, super duper subtle. Like, you're just, I actually don't use strum. I usually just throw, like, 2% random on it. So it sounds like someone's hand hitting the keys because they never hit perfectly. Yeah, it's like, brown, brown. And a little bit of bit crushing Brown. never hurts. Just be careful with it, because a lot of bit crushing sounds like crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be very subtle. You want a very subtle, like, upper range bit crush, like, bell effect on those, if, you, if you're if you going for what I'm mentioning. 
if you want to five percent OTT that. Uh, you need at least seventeen OTTs with That's all at like six percent. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and don't forget the sound good eyes are on the master. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> this is feedback and friends, where ha like 99% of the advice we try to give is useful, the other 1% is memes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need, um, like, a meme warning thing that flashes. <laughs> this is a meme. Please do not try this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up we have Forever Escaping by Uvo, who um, wants feedback on everything. Everything, all right. Oh, come on.
Forever Escaping by Uvo. And I'm going to let Bako go first. Uh, yeah, that was a really cool track. I like the vibe of it. Um, I really liked the some cinematic in, uh, introduction uh, along with the use of space um, during the break sections. And I was not expecting that drop, which I'm not sure is a good thing or a bad thing. I feel like you might want to introduce something from it just so that people or uh, make the transition a little bit more clear so people like know that it's coming. Um, but again, it is kind of like an artistic choice in that regard because you're really making a 180 switch there um and if you want to surprise the person then you've done a good job at that um and then in terms of the mix itself i saw a comment in there um that was saying that the snare is like way too loud um and also it's just not like the right sound of snare um you want something a little bit more tight for like drum and bass style um that one's a very sort of splashy psh snare um, if you do want that high-end sort of hiss, uh, a really good trick that I know is adding a vocoder to it and putting it on white noise and blending it in at like 10, 15, 20%. Um, that, and then you can take the timing on that and adjust the release in order to tighten up the snare um, while keeping the core sound of it as well. Um, but yeah, the overall is a really cool track. I think the, the fundamental idea is there and I think that you just gotta um, work on a little bit of tightening up the drums and um, maybe making transitions a little smoother. Sunny. All right. Would you like so to go next? there's this really strange bass presence in the very beginning. It sounds like what happens when you have your TV and you're watching with your family in the living room and you have the volume really loud and you just hear the buzzing of the TV because it can't handle the amount of bass of like I don't know a spaceship landing. Um, that's just what comes to mind. That could definitely use some work. You've actually got a breakdown in the middle there that has a very similar feel. I think that would suit better for your intro than the intro you currently have. As for the very abrupt intro, if he, if you wanted to go for the very abrupt surprise, oh, it was going to be an orchestral track, and now it's um, Neuro-ish drum and bass, but if you wanted to break up that transition, what you could do is EQ in the drums. So put a low-pass filter on an EQ with an automation clip and have it open up to you. Hear, and, then it, and then you hear, I guess, a pause where you just have the drums and a, like a break and then into the drum and bass. Um, the wobble you have for the bass there also has some really strange harmonics in it. You definitely want to probably EQ that or change the, change the sound a little bit. It could use something a little more clean in the middle registrar instead of it just being everywhere and all frequencies. <laughs> the hi-hats feel buried and the breakdown could use probably the same thing I mentioned for the intro, and with this this style of bass, you want some more modulation and slide with that bass as well. You definitely want some more of that. Don't be afraid to do some entire octave slides. You want to do stuff like that. Snail, snare feels harsh, that's what everyone was saying. For the suggestion there, you could probably chop it. So, when it's playing back to back, chop off that end, that shh, and you go so you have that stutter, and it's shh, and you let it play out. Just an interesting idea I had that I thought I'd share. Sorry for the ramble. No, it's fine. Um, I I can tell you exactly why. I mean, um, if you fix the intro, you actually make it easier to start fixing the rest of the track in terms of harmonics. Um, right now, um, your orchestral instruments aren't arranged like an orchestra. I mean, the, the, the melodies and stuff are fine, but spatially, they're not arranged. I mean, um, there's um, usually um, these like graphs and things you can find online that show you where each instrument sits in an actual orchestra and that's your panning guide that's what you need to start looking at and saying okay where is my brass meant to be sitting where is my strings meant to be sitting where's my piano etc 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 and then suddenly you've made space for yourself i mean this is all stuff you can do before you get to eq with orchestral stuff because um if you've panned everything in the way it would be in the real world it's suddenly way, way easier to work with. And then suddenly you could say, well, obviously I'm trading instruments for the orchestral stuff. 
I'm adding my neuro D and B ish sounds and my weird synth arps and whatever else. But what you're doing then is effectively choosing to swap one instrument for another instrument. So you then choose just directly take the panning method that you've established for your intro and use that to guide how you pan everything else. Um, it keeps the consistency, which is good because you want to change tone. You have to keep something spatially consistent to help ground the listener. Unless you're, you know, unless you're making something truly psychedelic. But I don't think this is that. This is kind of driving. And that means it has to maintain some sort of logic to it. Um, but yeah, and then that makes it easier to tie everything together and work out where your gaps are as well. And it'll be way easier to mix and it'll just take a lot of the effort out. I mean, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to make everything up from scratch. People have done the research and worked this out for you. Sonny, you had some stuff to say about sick and a bit. Um, I, I found better words for what I was trying to say about the bass. In a lot of uh, wobble drum and basses, um, you guys hopefully know what a reese bass is and what makes it a reese bass. You play it at higher octaves, it wobbles more. You play it at lower octaves, it wobbles less, I think. Like, something like that for your wobble bass. Something like that, you know? That, that would work really well. I think you should definitely do something like that. I don't know how you'd do it. Probably set something key. I wouldn't know how to synthesize that. It's just what comes to mind. Okay, well, I mean, I think that's enough to get going on with there, Uvo. Um, hopefully that feedback was useful. And if anyone in the chat has good orchestral arrangement panning guides, um, please paste a link to one of those. I think it'd be appreciated. Um, next up, we have Clowns in Hollow Weird. Um, Ooh, this I'm track... curious as what when he's playing today. <laughs> yeah, okay. How is my gain stage and it's the vibe? And what would you add? Back oh, yeah, to? this is the one he actually want, stage. want bacon bits to give honest. He calls you bacon <laughs> bits? Yeah, I've been doing some mixing for Clowns of Hollow Weird. Uh, so me and him have become friends in the last little while. He's nicknamed me Bacco Bits. Um, <laughs> that's your name now. I'm calling you back from now that's on. That's fine. I don't mind it. <laughs> and then uh, uh, he, I was explaining to him how to do the level balancing because um, he's way more of a performer. Like he's un insane on the guitar and he plays like eleven different instruments or something. Um, but uh, I was explaining how to like level balance to try to get your mix right before you start doing anything else. And then he's like, "Oh yeah, I showed me a track yesterday." He's like, "I did it," and I'm like, "Cool." And he's like tells me a little while later is like i actually just re-recorded everything at different volumes <laughs> instead of using the fader so this what he says is it's actually level balanced <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh my gosh i can't imagine all right you'll this, understand I, when you listen to the track <laughs> i could feel it v11 by clowns in hollow weird You've been in my life as long as I remember Criticizing what I do and leaving me so tender Close me off and chase me down, reveling in destruction Please just let me open up, I'm reveling desperation I can feel the rush, no retribution I'm on the run, escape and revolution I can feel it, I, I can feel it I can feel it
can't flip you around, you've got no one by your side Isn't it confusing how you keep on losing? You're wasting time, just read the signs, give us what we're after Battle blade, your tech to fix, dripping blood for the bed we made Slip away in two days, make us taste our pain Your life is in our hands, now you're living in denial So pick us up and hold us tight, we can't outrun our demons I can feel the rust, no retribution I'm on the run, it's saving revolution I can feel it, I, I can feel it I can feel it, I, I can feel it I can feel the rust, no hesitation I'm coming up and chasing revelation I can feel it, I, I can feel it I can feel it, I, I can feel the rush I can feel the rush sure everything's fine that was i can feel it by clowns in hollow weird um i wasn't expecting aor style stuff from like the 80s my brother would approve he's a massive fan of this sound um <laughs> my first recommendation i think going forward it's actually going to be one that is completely unlike me i'm going to say go copy country music like modern bro country and, and i'm meaning that literally in terms of vocal processing only he, don't change the instruments to match that. That'd be bad. Um, but like, um, it's right now. I can see, especially during the chorus, especially like specifically. Um, I can feel the rush. Uh, you know, um, which is a cool chorus, by the way. Um, you really want to get your vocal stacks as big as possible and as wide as possible. I mean, um, so you, I'm. You're not talking just one or two takes. You're talking try and stitch a dozen takes together and have it so it's all panned within a range of so like you've got your middle zero to like minus five with an individual take at each one kind of thing and all of them have to be unique otherwise it'll cause weird phasing issues um but like that's kind of what you're going for especially in those final couple of rounds of your chorus um you know if, and if you want to compete in a modern context you know where everyone's got an arsenal of things in your door kind of thing um you know that's that's you want that effect of being just so well produced stacked vocals and then it'll also help that if you make it really really strong it'll help differentiate your verses on your choruses i just I mean, just wanted to sing i mean uh, i always want to <laughs> sing i likely have to get sing on one of Backhoe's songs at some point I'm sure now that I don't have a call yeah man that. I would need vocals all the time <laughs> I got like yeah, seven tracks sitting there uh, send me an instrumental <laughs> later um, yeah, okay, the, cool. in Clowns and Hollow Weird you know your your voice is just right for this I mean seriously you may hate singing but like you know this is actually you've got the right tone for this I don't have that tone I can't do AOR vocals and that's no bad thing. Everyone's got their specialty. The fact is you're writing songs that are actually catering to the nature of your voice. That's really cool. And it's something that if you're doing a singer producer thing, you should be doing like, you know, you should be able to recognize when you, your voice is the right thing or whether you need to outsource it. And I think this track, your voice works really damned well. I mean, all my thoughts for this is just um, further polishing. I mean, um, there are points where it feels like your drums, they're kind of getting subsumed by everything. Um, and that's not really a gain staging thing. I think on the whole, your levels are okay. It's now down to things like EQ and panning, which are finicky as hell. Um, so I'm going to leave that thought there. And back a bit. <laughs> this is going to stick too, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so awesome job on the leveling. I think you're like 90% there. Uh, the only thing that I think really needs work on the leveling is that during the chorus, um, there is like a lead guitar element or like it might be part of the rhythm section. I'm not sure. Um, it's a little bit too low in the mix. You need it a little bit higher to match the vocals and to give energy to the chorus because 
the courses just come in in a little bit flat and that's just more like small little nuance to move up and down uh and then other than that i think you're ready to start panning and doing eq um which we can go over later um if you want um, yes and, and <laughs> i did a whole stream and recorded mixing one of his tracks for him uh so i've been i've been teaching him the the things that i know um but yeah, it's uh, you're a really good job. I'm glad that you didn't <laughs> just re-record everything. Um, but I totally agree uh, with Nathan on the layering vocals. Um, it's one of the things that if you can do it, especially because you're recording it yourself, you should do it. Because like if I had the option every time I had a vocalist, I'd be like, give me 50 takes, and I will like make like 15 layer vocal tracks out of that. You're like... gonna work me to death, <laughs> aren't you, Becca? Oh, if I, if you let me, <laughs> but a lot of them will just put it down and be like, "I did one take, so I'm done." <laughs> I mean, I, I think on some of the stuff from when I did vocal sessions in that studio, I was trying to cram a whole album in one day, which was a uh, don't do that. It's not recommended. That's a lot. Um, yeah. And but I did. There were some parts of the song where I did four or five, six takes, deliberately because I knew I would need them. <laughs> <laughs> Just the biggest stack. thing is just save your bad your bad takes like oops um you can just uh use them for for layering yeah save everything save everything <laughs> sunny where would so you go from here about bad takes um definitely do that i i have one song that i actually have like 15 takes and there was one time when I was showing someone the vocals that I had recorded for him, and it played all 15 vocals at the exact same time with all the bloopers. You have no idea. It sounded so horrible. <laughs> okay, on to actual, actual, um, what's it called? Feedback and friends. Feedback now. At the beginning, uh, the reverb sounds a little funny on the, the vocals. Do you guys agree with me on that one? Yeah, yes. the reverb was way too excessive on his first take of it, and I had to use RX to clear out a bunch of it. I almost wanted to say it sounded like bad square room reverb, but I wasn't I, I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to take he that step He has a really nice say recording that. setup, it's just too much processing. Alright, alright. Um, the sparklies also seem like they're taking up the exact same space as the vocal, so they sound nice, but they seem to be at the exact same frequency as the vocal, and they just kind of mesh together strangely. I think if you panned them off to the side, that would be easily fixed. Also, yeah. there was um, the middle bit. You had like this really quiet, plucky guitar. I thought that was a really nice touch. I did hear it. You know, I, like, I hate when people don't notice all the small things I put into a track. That was nice. I liked that. I'd also like to hear some alternate voices at the end. Something I've done in my own recording is record a vocal, and then I'll put another vocal higher up over top of it, maybe with different lyrics or a different rhythm. Rhythm? Rhythm. <laughs> um, rhythm. And I'll EQ... Rhythm! I'll EQ out um, a lot of the frequencies, so it's very thin, um, so it doesn't clash with the main vocal. So something like... Something like that at the, at the top there, and I think that would really help bring your song to a climax. Things like that would really work. Yeah, Otherwise, for... it's a cool song. I like it. I love it. You can for another piece of context, rush. all of his uh, <laughs> instrumentation all lives in the same spot on the frequency spectrum. So the fact that he's able to get it that clear with just leveling is really cool. Because like we, when he first showed it to me, it was all at the same level and it was all in the same spot. So it was just like... <laughs> oh yeah, that, that was my first song in a nutshell, but I use synthesizers. <laughs> so all I did was hit... Control A to select everything, and then Control up arrow to octave up some things, op octave down some things, and that's what I did to fix it. But synthesizers, MIDI, yeah. I mean, um, honestly, I think it's better you so didn't. Far. And um, <laughs> keep it up, clowns in Hollow Weird. Your music isn't all weird. It's sub. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool, you know, being able to do all this stuff is amazing. Also, it sounds like you need a band, like an actual person who can be like your front man if you hate singing and just want to play. But keep that means keep writing. You might be able to find someone who vibes with your music and is like, yeah, I'll work with you, I'll be your singer. And can sound A-R-O-R-A-L-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-O-R-
music. I I cannot do rock. <laughs> Can I do rock? <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Hard to Find by Jinzo. Um, they want to release this soon, and would like to know what we all think. So we're getting an early exclusive. <laughs> Has disappeared. Your camera's disappeared. Oh, it's fine. God, it's all over. Huh. All right, there, it's fine. We, we'll it is the we'll end of the world as we know it. <laughs> hard to find. Hard to classify. I mean, it was sort of psychedelic in places, like a uh, um, proper old school 60s, 70s arrangement. But then you had your heavy hitting crap EDM bass sounds, and it was just really satisfying to listen to. I mean, um, you're right. I think this is release worthy. <laughs> Sunny, is there anything you can I, help me to improve on this? Because I I don't know what to suggest here. This is such a mishmash of genres, and it's so interesting and like unique that and catchy. I can't, I can't tell what's design choice and what doesn't fit. The only thing that stuck out to me is you had a really stuffy sounding snare, but that might just fit within this track. So uh, I didn't think it was off. I, 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 I don't, I couldn't tell if it was off. I just was like, hey, that's a stuffy snare, but it doesn't sound bad. Usually, I find that to be a bad thing. So I'm like, it's the line between intention and execution and mm -hmm. I think in this case they're yeah. aligned mm -hmm. it, I mean in any other context that snare would just be complete rubbish but I think <laughs> yeah I know right <laughs> sometimes it works man I've used like a metal pipe as a snare for a video game track and it worked perfectly <laughs> honestly that I mean it was just so satisfying it's nice you know um to have just something that feels right and yeah release this dude it may not if you if you're waiting for a label or whatever good luck but um i don't have anything really to suggest here on these headphones the, the highs they were noticeable but weren't like i mean clowns you're saying it's too short i mean for this style of music where it's very beat heavy it's actually quite typical for songs to be around two two minutes uh, two and a half minutes and then yeah and also, it's like, you know, I'd rather just listen to it again. Maybe we should. Maybe we should Yeah, just it leaves it you again. wanting more. 
Do you want to just play it again, guys? <laughs> Go sure, for if it. you want. Go ahead. I mean, like, you know. I'm going to talk about it. But you see what I mean? It's just, look at those little flute flares, the trills, I think they're called. It has like a little bit of a lo-fi element to it too. That's a a new Prado one. And I like the pan on my you just wanna get find find a piece of you so it's hard to find. Yeah, that little vibrato is excellent with the blue. <laughs> like one suggestion and it's more of a try it out rather than you need to do it um i think if you try to use um uh compression on your vocals because the compression levels are good but if you try to like open up the attack a little bit more and um play around with the release until you get a little bit more like punch on the transients of your words um i think that would help a little bit because it sounds like it's supposed to be like a rhythmic like drum kind of like you, like a percussive element of the song um so i would try that and see if it sounds better and if it doesn't then just turf the idea out but i think it would it's worth a shot and just to see if it sounds it, like it might improve it a little bit but like that's the only thing i got for you <laughs> and um yeah like uh, and also it has a proper outro like you know it's a very mm -hmm. short one but like it's actually does result i mean i love that like you know i'm always gonna give kudos for anyone who can just pull off a decent outro they're underrated intros and, and outros i love fading out man feels like uh pulling a rabbit out of a hat you know <laughs> all right next up um provided this link works it's a shortened one sometimes they're funny uh this is by freddy z do you prefer freddy z or freddy z like some sort of american america America. I'm not you, but I'm gonna definitely say Freddy Z. Hey, it's your boy Freddy Z on the microphone. No, Hello. how dare you? I'm not okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh uh, this is Twags by Freddy Z. I did not Z. expect to nail that as well as I did. <laughs> with the cringe value? Yeah. <laughs>
your autoplay doesn't do whatever it's going to do. Come on, SoundCloud, behave. Just be two seconds. Mm, 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 mm. So, um, that was Twangs, which was um, clearly a reggae, dub reggae inspired piece. Um, Definitely. Reggae, that explains it. Yeah, it's yeah, like a it's dub reggae. reggae. Um, I didn't think reggae. I was thinking Tropical House. I was like, this isn't Tropical House. No, it's yeah. reggae. The sort of tinny sound on the drums is not always Tropical House. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, I take it, given your um, it, confusion there, Sonny, that you don't listen to a lot of reggae. Um, I've kind of been listening to reggae a lot more recently, and I was like, ooh, just, I really want to make Marley. something like this. <laughs> but, um, I... It's not often enough to really be able to define the gen genre, that's for sure. Baco, what about yourself? Um, I've heard this track before, I'm pretty sure. Because I recognize the bell melody in the last quarter of it. Um, you've been working on this for a long time. So my first suggestion is work on a new song. Um, not to like, it's <laughs> <laughs> not to say that this would like just needs to be thrown in the garbage or whatever, but it's like, wait, yeah, don't when do you're... Anything. Yeah, well, I think that you're, um, it sounds like you're a newer producer, and one of the things that you really need to focus on as a new producer is making a lot of really short songs. Like, just make, like, I made, like, a hundred in my first year to get to where I am now, and I still wish that I had more time in the day to make more. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, for this song, uh, I was counting the number of measures that you were repeating your loop, and it was four times. Cut that in half. Just do two times for each one. Um, I think that this song could also be separated into two separate songs because you have two sort of different melodic elements in two different spots. Um, I would just split it into two different songs and then make them as good as you can and then be like, all right, I'm, that's as good as I got. Let's move on to the next one. And every time you iterate from there, you're going to get better and better and better. And then you can go back. Like I just started going back on my old stuff and being like, wow, that melody is awesome. Pull that. Those chords are great. Pull that. And I really like the drums here. Pull that. And then boom, new song. Um, so that's really uh, a really good way to do it. And then once you've made enough stuff, you just wind up having a body of work. Um, but yeah, uh, it's mostly a, the repetitive nature of the sort of loops that you've built. Um, it sounds like you have like one loop next to another loop next to another loop. You are changing the elements and they are connected, but the transitions need to happen a little bit better. And um, the um, there needs to be some modulation or automation of something in them to make them a little bit more interesting. But that's my two cents. I mean, um, I think as well for me, it was some of the, uh, the bell sounds were a little bit more dissonant than you're probably intending. And I think partly it's because um, they hit the same every time. And that's over every chord variation underneath with the bass. So it's like boom, 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 boom. And then they're doing their, the bass. The, um, so the bass is doing lots of interesting harmonic things underneath when you've got the bells going at the same time. But they're just sort of doing one really simple thing that isn't actually being tweaked to match every chord change um the other thing as well is you need to uh, if you change your timings a bit so rather than having it, everything hit on your fourths eighths and sixteenths in a strict rigid fashion you start stuttering things out syncopate it um so that then um it'll make it easier to yeah introduce some swing into it um, and it'll make it easier to spa it provide more space and variation because you're opening up another aspect of your toolbox. Um, and it's just fun. <laughs> and, um, the, let's, I mean, a reggae, I don't listen to a huge amount of it. There's like a couple of songs on my spot of wherever. It's really obvious ones, like, um, UB40. Um, I, I don't remember if it was as a cover. I think it might have been. Um, Red Wed Wine is one of the songs I've got in my Spotify library. Um, and it's like this sort of length of song. And uh, the beat, it doesn't change a huge amount across the entire track. Um, but because they're all playing it, like for real, they're relying on that natural organic tension that you get with playing the same thing over and over again in real life. And it never being exactly the same. As well as the fact that for the good chunk of the song, it's obviously got vocals and lyrics and stuff. But it's still a very repetitive song, but it's a successful repetitive song. And um, I think that if you're programming things in MIDI, that's where you have to sort of start focusing your attention once you get to this point. 
um, is, you know, just micro tensions and little variations that nobody subconsciously will notice, but subconsciously they will. Um, if you want to summon the Q, it's always link Q. It's an exclamation mark link Q to summon this form. There we go. Um, <laughs> uh, the Q it still has space. Um, next up, we. Um, yeah, I agree with Bako. Go work on some new stuff. Um, even if it's more reggae, but you know, just um, that that can be useful too, actually, as well, just to work on more things in the same genre. And uh, if you can um, find. Maybe even try covering a couple of songs in the genre just to sort of get a feel for it. Yeah. Um, in terms One of the of best things you can do. Looks in your door. I made Big carbon copies of songs swing. that I liked in my genre. Big thing is swing helps a lot. A little bit of variation like a... But um, you hear that a lot in reggae. You hear a lot of um, offbeat plucks on there as well. Um, a lot of things like that. Sometimes a distorted bass line, like a chorusy almost, phasered bass line works a lot in that phasers. genre I like flanges like yeah this. yeah putting putting a phaser on the baseline what make it go wow 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 you know um that could that could be really interesting for you uh let's see yeah yeah just some variation in the drums i don't think the reverb you've got on the drums works really well unless you're trying to make a marching band so <laughs> Clowns is asking if you can join the stream. Uh, yeah, I believe you just have to ask Nathan and uh, have yeah, you on. Yeah, give me a second. Um, you have a, a thingy. I'll send that him your contact session. info. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, you can join in. I think uh, right now it's, um, I guess, if you have everything set up now, you could come in now, I suppose. But, I mean, like, um, otherwise, you've always there's always next week if you want. It's, um, let me know what you prefer. Um... Should I send him the link for now? Um, you do have to change it slightly. Um, it's per. Okay. Um, if you make a, change the number of the guests to five. Okay. Um, then that'll work for him. Like so, you know that just where it says guest whatever. The second yeah. I can edit your. Uh, yeah, guest artist. If you add a five. That'll, like this. I'll just send you. That'll work. Okay. Um, so next up, though, we um, while well, we we'll see what happens with that. Oh come on! Sometimes things start breaking in spontaneously. Next up, we have a song called "Tilt Shift" by Slack DB. Uh, James Slack, I think I saw him in the chat earlier. Um, yeah, let's go. A... Um, <coughs> he's up next. So let's play Tilt Ship.
boop, boop. Oh, just a second, I got. Uh... Um, where's my camera gone? I don't know. Is it here? It's here. I don't know. Um, bloop. So, um, so far, uh, that my only thought is, is for this genre, it's very short. And it felt like it maybe it was building up to something really, really big and hype, but it just sort of was like, okay, bye now. In terms of production, I thought it was solid. Um, so, Bako, I'm going to let you have some thoughts and maybe we can bat off those. I love this style of music. Old school drum and bass just tugs at the old heartstrings from when I was young and doing stupid things. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, really solid production. I think that there's something missing from it. Um, I'm not sure if it's a lead element or like maybe it's an ARP, um, but something needs to tie the beginning section to the piano section together. Uh, your instrumentation is really good. The piano sounds great. The drum selection is awesome. Um, it's just like missing that little something that gives it a little bit of that zhuzh. And um, I saw a comment that was saying that you need a little bit more sizzle on the high end. I think that whatever the element is should be something that plays into that as well, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, that's a really good track. Also, what's Gem uh, released? I tried to Google it, but I couldn't find anything about it. Is that like a... a... I think it's a label. Is a label? Because that's super cool. Congratulations. So, um, right now I've got... Clowns of Hollow Weird, I think, trying to join on the Video Ninja, and I had to mute him a second because he was feedback looping us somehow. Oh, yeah. And he's got us yeah, on his screen. Yeah, earbuds, earbuds, earbuds. He's got us on his screen, but not his camera. I'm not sure what's, yeah, what's going on with that. I don't think he's going to come on with a camera because he's somebody who's well known in the music industry and he wants to remain relatively anonymous. Uh, that's um, fair enough. But I mean, like, you have to but, fix the feedback loop there, dude. But, uh, unfortunately, I can't. Yeah, you need to turn, turn off. Right uh, don't share your screen. Just join with a camera and turn the camera off. And just leave you in the background on voice. That's fine. <laughs> um, just yeah, I think he joined in. with share screen. Yeah, um, just um, you don't have to have a camera on. Just um, you, right now, nobody can see you, but me. So you can um, le you know, don't have share screen because it's feeding your audio back to us. It's not um, amazing. Um, anyway, I'll come back to that in a second because um, obviously you can hear us, and um, I'll unmute you in a second once we've got the next track playing through. Um, next up, it was something I got distracted, so. <laughs> Not the first time. Drum and bass song. Okay. Drum and bass song. Gotta love liquid drum and bass. I do like liquid drum and bass. With the flowy pets you got. Like, it's a very liquid drum and bass. <clears throat> um, the kick and the snare come in with no transition. That's fine. But something I've always said, something you guys will hear me say all the time, EQing in those would work really well. But what I actually think might work really well is if you had a crash, you reverse it, you put a bunch of reverb on it, and you go... <sighs> You know, like that, a transi transition like that with some um, some crashes, you have some white noise sweeps up and down work really well in this genre. In between every bar, if you had like a crash that really just sizzled with a bunch of reverb on it, that could help a lot. Um, you could put some really quiet, um, plucky arpeggios, like maybe some kind of stringy arp that went through the entire track, or some chord strings would work really well as well. Um, also some very variation on the pads you've got there. You've got the kind of swell and then simmer down. Oh. Sorry, that was... Uh, you've got this swell on the, the pads. Maybe having something that kind of pulsed halfway through. Maybe transitioning to something like that. Breaking up those chords would work really well for this genre. And something that I have found to be absolutely amazing in this genre is actually hi-hats and rides with reverb on them paired with a really, really vibey vocal. Something really um, mellow, maybe a guy coming up close to the microphone and singing with that, what's that, what's the, what's that called when you sing close to get the low register of your voice? Well, to get the distance effect. It's a distance effect, you know, having oh, yeah. something that's so really the full proximity. and slow <clears throat> flowing throughout your song. ASMR. Or a higher up wispy female vocal would work really well as well. You don't even have to have words, you could just have <laughs> syllables. Something a little like, no 
not like this, you know. That's that's terrible. Don't do this. No. <laughs> yeah, you gotta add some ear candy. No, oh no. God. <laughs> All right. Um, well, thank you for your extensive feedback there, Sonny. That was good. Um, next up, we have Moon Boy Need You. Oh, no, it's a, a remix. Um, Bouty. Um, I we can't really play remixes on the channel, unfortunately. If you link something else, um, I'll get you next. Um, but I will. Sorry, I didn't see that. Um, yeah, we do, we can't do remixes because it makes it hey, more funny. Um, this next one better not be a remix either. Um, they didn't leave a username bing something also that random noise there was just me resetting my it turns out wireless screen technology isn't entirely 100% stable all the time this is chronostasis by bingbo um and Ooh. um we'll see what this is oh it's uploaded five months ago it better not be officially released so we'll just see what happens Mr. Clowns of Hello Weird, um, right now you should get a microphone in. Testing? Yes, we can hear you. Chronostasis by Bingbo. Um, now, interesting notes, they've been producing for half a year. They're using FL Studio, and they think this is one of their best sounding ideas so far. And in terms of um, idea generation, I uh, mean, um, I think it's not too bad. The 11th project I've made so far is the description. Um, so, um, we have Clowns of Hollow Weird currently here in audio form. Um, would you like to say hello, Mr. Weird? Uh, he Lou? just said his Uber Eats is here. <laughs> uh, God damn it! Uh, all right. I was gonna, there. I was gonna DoorDash some Chipotle, but I um didn't want it coming in in the middle of the stream, so I decided to starve myself until after stream. I got pizza well, before. Well, I, I appreciate your sacrifice. <laughs> I appreciate your sacrifice. All right. Um. Well, that was gonna busy, be my studio snack for the day. While he's busy, um, eating the world. Um. <laughs> Sounds like something he'd do. <laughs> uh, um, Bako, do you have any thoughts to someone who's been producing for only a few months? Yeah, this was me six months ago. <clears throat> um, hey. Your ideas are cool, 
you're very expressive, but you are not anywhere in any genre land. You are, <laughs> you've wandered off the map. And I did this a lot when I was first starting out and making a lot of tracks. It didn't, it took me probably like 25 tracks before I started landing genres where I wanted to. And I still have never made a trance track, even though that's the whole reason I got into this. I'm really good at making house. I try to make trance and then I make house. But anyway, <laughs> um, the, uh, I really like the instrumentation on the ARP that because you did a good job of modulating it you got a filter that's going on it that's like coming off you keep that interesting through the whole track um the next thing i would really look at is drums you really need to like focus in on like getting the right sound of drums um and and then after that then work on your bass and once you get those sort of three elements together that'll tie in whatever kind of track you're going for uh the other thing i think i highly recommend at this stage is to really start doing reference tracks like pull in some of the most inspiring music that you know and make exact copies of it if you can like do as good of a job as you can making like identical copies of it obviously don't release it but it's do it as like a case study like you know how like artists will go to like a famous museum and like do case studies on picasso or whatever you need to do the exact same thing but with music and you need to just make copies and copies of the same kind of music that you want to start making and then that will sort of cement in your brain as to what the sound is as well as you can also just when you're done take all of the midi data out of there strip it all out keep all the sounds the same and then just put in stuff that you want in your your own rhythms your own um uh like chord progressions uh and then that way you'll be able to build from there so um i think it's a really good start and i think that your idea generation is really cool i, I think that you should definitely put a flag on this one and save that art uh, or that lead melody for later um because you will definitely want to rem remix that later on when you have a lot more under your belt <clears throat> sunny skies anything to add to that extensive um direction guidance by Baco bacon bits <laughs> so, oh, was that me? No, you're fine. Yeah, that's you. I forget someone else is in here, so when you say next person up, I just kind of assumed it was me. My apologies. Well, I'm letting you go for it next, Sonny, and then I'll see Mr. Clowns in Hollow Weird seems to be back, so he can come after you. Yep, I'm back. All right. Okay. So for the for the lead you've got, or the the Pereshigan you've. The progression you've got there. Something getting into music theory. Woo, scary. You've got to you've got to realize is you've got to tie together your melodies and your other sounds with your chords. You may not be off key. All the notes you played were on key, but they didn't mesh well with your chords. And here's why: a note on key is not necessarily going to mesh with the chords because if it's not something that your chord is built out of, then it's called a passing tone. <clears throat> passing tones are what you use to build up to your key notes, which are the notes you usually hit on beat that you want to be accented. All you have are accenting notes and you don't have any notes that resonate really well with the chords and stand out. So it just kind of exists. Um, and that's probably the biggest problem you've got lead-wise there. That that might help you. I wouldn't follow it to a T, but it helps a lot if you stick somewhat within the chords. Don't always do it, but it helps a lot. Because right now it sounds like you took a keyboard and you were like, well, my key is in C major, so let me just... Yeah, it sounds oh, like you did that. <laughs> <clears throat> um, the, the vocals as well seem like a mess of reverb you have the vocals in the middle there is too much reverb cut that decay make it less it's it just resonates and feeds back into this huge mess be careful with reverb reverb sounds amazing don't overuse it sounds like someone held the sustain pedal on a piano and just kept hitting notes <laughs> well, i've done that before <laughs> and i was actually searching for a song that i could show you from whenever i was early because i keep all my stuff saved Hold on. This is what I sounded like a year ago. This was made by FL Studio Mobile. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that's what I sounded like. You got a long way to go. Um, but you, you're doing pretty good for a start. You'll get there, man. Just keep at it. <clears throat> so, Mr. Clowns. Okay, so I'm going to disagree with you guys on this one. Um, uh... I actually thought uh, the construction of the melodies are really nice. Um, 
a lot of Eastern influence in this song. You can really hear it. Uh, it reminds me of a um, somebody I met in the '90s. Um, this great uh, Lou player uh, really reminded me of how they played. Um, the panning was my biggest issue with this piece. Like it was bouncing between the ears, and that I think was causing the reverb to seem like it was going crazy. Um, for the style that they were doing, I, I've heard it before, and like the reverb was actually spot on. It was the panning that was like I think screwing you guys up because um, it was just switching between the ears too much. Um, so I'm going to disagree with that. The construction of it is a mess, um, but like your construction of it is a really nice concept. It just needs further development. Um, this this would have been like a hit in the, like the early 90s, mid 90s. Now, not so much. But I can definitely see the in, Eastern influences in this. In this, I, I can see why a, somebody from who has a lot of Western influence would look at this and go, no. <laughs> but um, I've listened to a lot of music uh, from the Asian area. And this actually would be really big over there right now. And yeah, I saw Southwest. that look, Flacco. <laughs> Our Eastern, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> um, apparently, I'm when people and in... oh. yeah, sorry. <laughs> but apparently, yeah, that's why we disagree. In... Oh. I just think I just think it needs more development. And yeah, the mixing needs to be done right. I think the panning was screwing with the the reverb quite a bit. All right, so sorry, I just um, thank you for that um, feedback. And obviously, you know, you say oh, I'm going to disagree with you, but that's the whole point of this show. You know, like we shouldn't all be in unison, and it's why I try to get I'm trying to get more guests on that have different opinions and stuff. Um, this week, um, I dropped the ball a little bit because I thought I had something else maybe on, but then um, it wasn't, and I was fine. But um, the so yeah, it's valuable to have that different perspective. Um, next up, we have bu, 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 bu. We have music. Um, Soggy by. <laughs> Please don't make Toby Fox destroy our stream. He will come <laughs> after us, and he will make us pay him royalties. And I can't afford to pay Toby Fox royalties. I can't afford it. All right, this is Soggy by Just J. I forgot to read out the comment for this one um, and they said they started this song last year and stopped at the drop and that the drop is work in progress and they describe it as really bad I wouldn't necessarily 100% agree on that one um, but they would, would like feedback on how to improve that drop and so maybe some advice on EQ 
they say they have no formal music education, um, if that matters. I mean, it doesn't really. We're, I mean, I'm self-taught. Baku, I think, is self-taught. Uh, Sunny, I think yep. some of your stuff is self-taught. Clowns in Hollow Weird, are you self-taught as well? Most of my stuff is just kind of learned, but I had the blessing of a really nice choir teacher in high school. Uh, yeah, self-taught. Okay, so, you know, lots of self-taught. Sorry, I got to flick back to the burp, 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 camera mode. Um, I've got too many screens and too many buttons. Um, I think the issue with your drop is not, like, and t the vocal chops don't work. Right now they're out of key. Um, that's a really big issue there. But, I mean, um, I don't think your drop is bad. It's just you stopped... You know, you started writing out the arrangement for a drop and then didn't work on any of the sound design. So you didn't really get that feeling of a drop because um, there's not much to it. It has to be really big and brash and bulky. And right now it's only like two layers. And so that's kind of diminishing the impact of how droppy it is. Um, Sunny, what do you think? Any useful feedback? I us. like your melodic attempt to dubstep. use vocal chops. So, what? It's melodic dubstep, I think. That's what I was kind of getting the vibe of, and it's not quite filled out enough for melodic dubstep. If uh, Do you know what genre you were trying to go for? I, I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to go through the rest of what I was going to say while I wait for your response. Um... You've, you've sound like you got a bagpipe in there, which is interesting. It's uh, very minimal, though. For melodic dubstep, you often fill out that space with a lot of really gorgeous-sounding sweeps, pads, key, um, key sounds. Uh, usually a really thick bass, especially in the drop. You'll layer your bass. You've got a sub, you've got a low bass, and you've got a mid bass. And oftentimes, you'll have a lot of automation with that mid bass as well. You just kind of make music until you think it sounds good. Um... Something that immensely helped me was following a template of some kind. That's kind of what I've taken to looking at genres as. Now, if you have a genre or if you have a song that you like and you know what genre it is, try and look up any old YouTube tutorial on that. See what elements make up that song and try doing stuff like that. If you want to, you can actually download songs online, put them into your DAW, um, sync up your tempo and find out how long different sections of the songs are. So you have this section that's build up, this section that's drop, this section that's break down, this section that's build up, this section that drop. You can mix that up and use that to progress your track. That's what I did for um, Smile, Deer, and Wave, the guitar song that I submitted, I think, last week. Literally took another song and followed its progression and just put my own chords, sounds, and all sorts of stuff over top. That'll, that'll help you a lot if you want to get something a little bit more cohesive. <clears throat> so, um, clowns, would you like to go next? Um, I know you tend to focus more on the acoustic and the rock and that sort of stuff, but do you listen to uh, the yeah, music? Um, this, um, so on this, um, what I would say on this one is like, um, I'd step back from it. Uh, I know that they're going on what sounds good. The problem uh, that you got to, this is an issue that I see with a lot of people who uh, come on Twitch. Uh, they think something sounds good until they give it space. So I would take a week off, come back, listen to it, and then address the issues that, that you hear. If it, And this is something I was, I was even telling Baco the other day. Like, don't change something just to change it. Change it to make it better. If you can't make it better, then there's no need to change it. Um, I would take a week off, don't touch this song, and listen to the genre you're trying to, to like mimic, and then come back to it and listen for everything that's wrong with it. And I did the same thing when I, they said that they, uh, they'd go with what sounds good. I did the same thing. Uh, but you got to give yourself space because if you don't, you're just going to fall into the trap of, I think it's good even though it's not. Um, so at the end of the day, like you need to give a little bit of room on this and then try again, come back to it and just keep working at the song. I think, I think it has a lot of potential. Um, and I'm going to shoot it back over to you, Nathan. Okay, well, I mean, I think it's the last person here is Bako, but I mean, before I pass it over to him, I mean, um, for me, whenever I get to, like, even though I try and just do what sounds good, 
Um, I always try to re when I'm reevaluating a track and whether I like it or not. I always try and um, you know take it in context. I'm like, okay, where would I want this track to be heard, and who is it competing against? It's not a competition to make music, but um, people have specific expectations. Like my, a lot of my music is not club suited at all, and in that context, it's a complete failure. Um, but obviously, I have intended it for it to be listened in that context so therefore obviously you know that's fine um but like you know that's when you sort of if you establish what your goal is with a track like are you trying to do something that's nice to sit and listen to on the couch then that's a different set of rules and but there's also specific things that work really well in those contexts um like long sweeping sounds if you want to make some things more, more ambient or um you know driving music everything's all um, if, if you want it to play well in a car, um, having a crazy exaggerated sub bass is totally fine. Um, because that's kind of what you'd want out of your little Ford Punto or whatever, Kia car or whatever they... I, I don't know cars very well, sorry. Um, <laughs> but you know, little sporty car with the... Uh, you know, everyone hates having one drive by with the noise of the music blaring out, but... It's fun. It's like genuinely fun, and that's why people do it. And the music reflects that. It's like designed for that environment. Uh, funk and big heat hip hop beats and stuff. They're designed to be blared out of bad subwoofery speakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why there's distorted basses. So yeah, if you distort so... your bass off your own speaker, it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly, but I mean, uh, so that context I think <clears throat> is impor as important as genre. Um, you know, if you decide that, you sort of set the rules for yourself and say, okay, I'm not really allowed to do these things if I wanted to work in that environment. Um, Bako, any other feedback for, for rounding off? Automation. Everything? Automate the crap out of everything. Um, you got a lot oh, of yeah. really good sound design, uh, but nothing really modulates during the um, different sections of the song. Um, if you look at any really high-level producers, like... Uh, I was uh, watching Aznadel on stream. He does like a podcast thing. And uh, he was talking about um, Skrillex. And Skrillex like goes through individually and like changes every single snare in a track. Just a little bit. Like one will sound perfectly clean. One will have a reverb splash on it. One will have a little bit of distortion. One will have like a little bit of a pitch shift. And like every single individual. But So it's like all those tiny, tiny details that add up to being something that really... Like you, you add like five point five percent here, point five percent there, point five percent there. When you start doing that a bunch, eventually you turn around and you have like a song that is like a hundred percent better. Um, so yeah, it's uh, you definitely want to start looking at doing uh, uh, a lot more automation on your tracks in order to keep the interest in the sounds. And then the same thing as the last two is just get get reference tracks, start making copies of songs, and just make a lot of music. Don't I, I think he said? Oh uh, no, that's Corvu. I don't think that was the person whose song was played, but yeah um you should be making try like striving to make like a song a week if and i think that's a good place to start out with and if you can do faster than that then do faster than that and just make it as good as you can and then put it down and be like i'm done and now it's the next song okay has anyone else got any lasting comments or are we ready to move on i'm gonna bless you guys with a word of the week there's this term called variation the definition of it in music is a um, a change to your musical idea. You still want to keep the same idea, but you want to vary it, whether that be through automation, through slight changes in your melody, through slight changes in your sound. You want it to sound cohesive. Unless you don't. Then that's designer's choice. <laughs> Must make it hyper pop. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have hyper pop, and then all of that just goes out the window. So, <laughs> boo hyper pop. I haven't that's heard a really fun. good hyper pop track in a while. Actually, I have a friend who does hyper pop. Um, actually, who I've been working with every now and then on songs. On it, I might bring in a song or done something like that. You're on it. Baco bits. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one for you. All right. <laughs> do it. Do no, it, dude. Join the dots. Nightcore. All right, next. I don't think I know what nightcore is, but okay. <laughs> um, imagine pitching up your vocal an octave up. Sounded like a chipmunk. 
Oh, I'm on. Daddy, like I'm a on. melody, <laughs> and my heart got me singing like na 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 na. You're gonna uh, get a copyright strike. Die you. <laughs> yeah, at least do something original. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I I want to follow up with the the variation uh, thing. I variation is absolutely key. Like I totally agree with Sonny on that. Um, just don't go overboard on it. You get there is such thing as too much variation. So some self control, but variation is definitely key. Brilliant. Next up, we have Funk Dealer and Bouty Need Me. Does it work? I guess that doesn't work. Sad. I guess pen might work. Yo. Can we hear the drop one more time? Uh, yeah. That Just last one? Just the last one. Two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Um, there's that second drop there, Clarence. Would you like to make any commentary now you've had your second okay, for, listen? Uh, for one, the construction of this is freaking, I love it. Um, I like <laughs> I like the outro of it. That drop was freaking really nice, like really clean, like spot on. I think even uh, Baka was just like, damn. <laughs> All right, I saw I saw the look on your face. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I'm a big sucker for uh, for Donkey like, House. <laughs> that was spot on, like really clean. There is a little bit of phasing going on um, in that drop, um, but it's very minute. Uh, you might want to look at that. It, it, I mean, it's already really clean. It's just a tiny bit of phasing. I think it's happening. I, I'm, I think that's synth. I don't even think that's brass. It sounds it's like sample. synth to me. It's like one of those multi-layered, <clears throat> exported, polished samples that you can get from. Oh, Netflix. okay. Um, so, okay, yeah. so that, that might be. About it. It, it might be splice. actually. Splice. I forget about splice. I, I don't like even know what splice. A thousand freaking so. credits on that stupid it's, thing. Yeah, it's basically. Uh, you know, you get you subscribe to it monthly. They give you a lot of credits, and then you can download one sample per credit kind of deal. Oh, I. I no, he's talking I about just... in the the brass there. Yeah, it's definitely that the brass itself is a little bit phasey, but I mean, I'm pretty sure you're right. It's built into the sample. One way to yeah. get around that would be to just um, run that track in mono with stereo effects. Yeah, and hit it with a bit of distortion to fill in the empty spots. Yeah, I yeah, that, that would... but your construction is amazing on this. Like, your progression was really nice. It came together. I mean, there is a couple of issues in it, like like the phasing there. And then at the beginning, um, I wasn't feeling it as much. And then as it moved through, it, I liked it. Uh, your opening... I, I absolutely hated the opening. Um, <laughs> the opening, I, mean, I, I have a thing with, uh, like, you do not open that hard. Um, yeah, that's, 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 it, that's like the genre, though. Turnoff. Yeah, it's a massive turnoff to the general public. I mean, for the genre, though, yeah, I know. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be coming... Yeah, it's big room. It's supposed to be coming on in a concert, with, like on giant yeah, speakers. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally get that. I said yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> change it. Um, For people's as, ears, so, you gotta catch people in the first ten seconds. Otherwise, you don't you really skip people. Ed. Yeah, well, I always say that too. I actually tell Baco that <laughs> ten seconds is all you get. Yeah. Um, but that from the opening did not hit for me, and as it went through, I caught onto it, and I freaking loved every second of it, up to the first like four seconds of it. I did not like, but that's just because this is not my genre. He's but, saying would you mind anyway, playing the first few seconds hard. again? Huh? Uh, yeah, two seconds. I can play the first two seconds. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. I thought it's not playing really well. You saw that really cool sound design, though. Yeah, absolutely amazing sound design. It just hit. It just hit me in a wrong way. I, I just did not care for it. <laughs> As someone who I, I, really like said, makes that kind of thing, I was like, whoa, when I first heard those sounds. I was like, oh my gosh. Because that's, that's what I aim to uh, to make, you know? Yeah, I love right. sound design like that. And I, I get that. I, I thought, I, Like I said, I thought every bit of it was excellent. It, but me, I would have turned it off if I was on Spotify. <laughs> that was That's me, though. Oh, yeah, I guess that intro is a little jarring. If you're just a casual listener, don't know anything right. about sound design, you just and use that. When I make Wah! music, I, I make it for the general general public. I mean, I that's what my job was, to appeal to everyone, not just one specific niche. And this is a Definition of pop right there. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, that's what I did for uh, 30 years, so... Um, it's understandable, if giving, yeah. If I'm giving advice, it's I'm, I'm aiming at the general general public not a niche group and as a niche group this is an excellent song if you want general oh, yeah. pop i would change that intro the first second just make it a little bit softer and then the whole yeah he, he said in the radio public. edited it's softer for the general public yeah oh he did yeah oh okay there you go yeah. see they, they know what's up all right i'll i'll pass it over to sunny i guess or whoever <laughs> love it so, I immediately got Glitch Hop off of this, which is not actually what it was, it was Bass House. I forget Bass House exists, but Bass House occupies that little niche that is in between dubstep and a normal house track. So, for anyone who 
ever wants to get really crazy into bass automation and make really interesting basses, look at this song. All you dubstep, neuro, drum and bassers, anything bass could use stuff like this in, in your songs. Even just a casual house song. This is the kind of sound design that you might be looking for. Also, I really liked the reverb fills that you had in your drops, where it cuts off, you hear the reverb settle out, and you continue on with the sound design. All the, the way you tie your different sounds into one another is really well done. Amazing. I, I really liked that. Yeah, I love the track. It was a bop. Um, the only thing I could say is, like, I want the bass to donk a little bit harder, as Nathaniel would say. Um, donk. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, uh, and I think it's, like, it's not a matter of, like, your sound design is, like, immaculate on everything. I think you just need, like, an FM layer that gives that, like, hollow pipe sound, that, like, dung, 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 and just, like, layer that in a little bit, and just, like, a little bit of it, just to, like, really make it, like, sound like it's, like, a pipe bouncing off the floor or something. Um, but, oh. like, that's, like, super nitpicky. This song is a fucking banger. <laughs> can, I, can I comment on what Baco just you said? One of the things you out. can do is uh, uh, take uh, your your bass layer and uh, just copy it. And then I, I just end up playing again. That's how I do it. Uh, but then uh, just change the frequency at which it's sitting uh, to a little bit higher. And it, it'll get that look like what he wants out of it, too. I mean, that's another way to do it. I just play it again. <laughs> uh, but I know you're not doing that. And yeah, go ahead, Baco. Sorry. No worries. Sorry, I got my bubble full. Nathaniel, what do you think? I mean, I think you guys all summed it up pretty damned well. I mean, um, on the whole, uh, in the, the, sort of the base house, big roomy corner, um, this would go hard. People would really lose their shit to it, which is you know good place to be in and the fact that everyone's critiques has more just been meta critique than it has been um super nitpicky about the song itself is a good sign i think because that's a difference as well one one thing that does i've noticed that we do sometimes on feedback and friends is we start talking about the big picture where does the track sit within the canon of a genre or the music and you know, we're not necessarily talking about that in, you know, it's not really a negative thing. It's a uh, philosophical discussion, really, when it comes to artistic intention and all that kind of stuff. And um, if your track has gone to the point where we're actually talking about that stuff, it means you've done a good job of inspiring us. So, good, good job. And thank you for linking that. I mean, um, I know it wasn't the remix you were originally planning on playing, but they're a bit funny on Twitch and YouTube sometimes about these things. Although, YouTube apparently has in... Um, I was asked if we were going to do a music news sec segment, um, but not, but like, this is at least a nice little interesting tidbit. Um, YouTube is going to try and make it more like TikTok, in that you can kind of use any sound anywhere. Um, so that might make, at least on YouTube, our lives a little bit easier regarding things like reviewing remixes. Um, it's... I would not necessarily, because I'm still not sure how Twitch is handling this stuff, but um, once I've looked into that some more, maybe one of the things we could do is um, record some, do some pre-recorded reviews for a couple of submissions here or there, just for mashups and remixes and stuff. Um, yeah, it also make good YouTube content. Yeah, so I mean, um, if anyone's interested in that, um, you know, make sure to, this is where we can plug the YouTube uh, make sure to subscribe to the ILBC YouTube channel um, because we do have content planned. I'm meant to be chopping up some of the stuff from the Barcelona finals as well. Um, but we don't you need have somebody to shred on it, let me know. <laughs> um, right now, I um, don't have a, like, we don't have a custom URL for the YouTube because we need 100 subscribers. There's 15 people in the chat here now. Um, if all 15 is subscribed, we'll get a lot closer to that mark. Um, so that's, um, you, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube for more long term content. Feedback and friends, right keep back. going. And, oh, no problem. Um, yeah, feedback and friends, we're gonna keep doing this as long as we can, or at least I will. And, um, Isha will be back at some point soon. Um, wish her well in your hearts. Um, she's, um, back home with her family right now and hopefully keeping good care of them. Um, so, um, you know, send out your love to her. Tweet, ping her on Twitter and tell you love her. Um, and she'll appreciate it. Um, next up, we have Rewind by um, Ed Arts. Uh, um, no, no, sorry, that was the... Sorry, Squared. Squared, I don't have one. 
but they have Garrett MKTA. I mean, that still kind of sounds kind of cool. It's apparently a two minute pop song. So this is Rewind. Let's go. tripping or is the chords bending I and mean, i think they are actually warping a little bit oh sorry i got to turn the others back on we'll come back taskbar we've reached the point where windows is not cooperating oh, come on sorry we'll be a second there we go all right you're back um sorry i just um so um I mean, yeah, I, there's a little bit of bendiness to the sound, but uh, I don't think it's a bad thing either. Um, it's interesting. You were asking whether you nailed the vibe, that, like, you know, and it's, if it's intended to be a pop song. I mean, um, I think in some ways this it sounds like it's trying to be a bedroom pop track. You know, you think, like, um, Claro and a bit of, like, um, what's her... There's that um, rapper, I think? She just basically makes beats on TikTok or whatever and got really big off doing that. Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Um, so, um, but you know, like it's like it wants to be lo-fi, but you don't commit because some bits of it still sound really clear. Like I feel like your vocal should be run through tape saturation, and um, you should um, be using more filter or manipulation on that bass sound and the kick. Um, you know, so that you can move in and out of this lo-fi, medium, fi, hi-fi space kind of thing deliberately as the track progresses. Um, and I, I think my the only other thing I'd say is your piano. Right now, it um, I don't think it's quite the right tone because it's not a very interesting piano, but you're playing it with very, very basic chords. Um, and so um, it gets boring really quickly, just that one element. And I think that um, either choose a different, more emotional sounding piano or find a way to start stacking different similar sounds to it to provide the variation on the like lower frequencies particularly to give it that emotional, feely vibe. Um, I think your actual chord choices are good and the vocal is interesting. So um, I'm going to pass along to um, Clowns, are you there? Mr. Hollow Weird. 
No, he said yeah. that he's. Um, I I only caught the last like ten seconds of the song, and yeah, I'm I'm in agreement with what I heard on the piano. I it it just sounds awful. Um, I heard the voice; it sounded good for the last ten seconds of it. But yeah, I'm gonna have to defer to you guys on this one. Sorry, my uh, granddaughter showed up and oh, that's uh, okay. brought me Say something hi. from Dairy Queen, so. <laughs> Uh, I'll I'll pass it over to you guys because I can't really give anything on this. That's okay. Um, so I'm gonna let Backhoe speak next, and then Sunny. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think the um, overall arrangement is pretty good. Um, the piano is a little bit too high in the mix, and I agree with Nathaniel that you might want to like find some kind of a lo-fi piano or something to go in that spot. Um, something with a little bit more character, like something even just that throws like a little bit of something out of tune uh, or like has some interesting resonances in it. Um, and then the other thing I would suggest is uh, in terms of making the chord progression a little bit more interesting, um, one thing that I find very effective in terms of uh, conveying the type of emotion that I feel like you're trying to convey is to throw the third up and have it as the top note of the chord. Um, because it, the the third note, which is like the middle note in between the chord, um, is like the one that gives the character and quality of whether it's like major or minor. Um, uh, if you throw the minor ones up, um, they sort of sound like a melody that plays over it, and um, it conveys a lot more emotion. Another trick is also to try and add sevenths and ninths um, to the chords, which is just like skip one uh, uh, skip one note in the scale up. Um, and then skip one note in the scale up again over the, the chords. And uh, those ones can also be very emotive and expressive. It's very common in like jazz and stuff. But um, yeah, I think a little bit more of an interesting pro chord progression along with a little bit more character in the piano will really um, glue this track together. Sonny, your turn. You can mute yourself, I think. You've muted yeah, yourself. Yeah, he's muted. <laughs> that wasn't me, that's you. You're there muted. You You're yeah, muted. There you go. Oh, I'm muted on there. What? Have I been silent this entire time? Yes. Yes. <laughs> no. For the entire stream. No, I, I had it muted for a while. Yeah, we've just been okay. responding to your <laughs> chat messages. <laughs> so that explain. I've been I've been trying to talk to you guys for a minute. I just haven't been getting a response. Okay, so this is a C major chord. This is a C major seventh. And with the third raised, this is what it sounds like. Yeah, that's the third raised. I'm sounding like an old man now. Um, that's that's probably what it was talking about. That's that's a reference if, if you're if you're at all curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm the old um, man in the group. The vocal stop, there stop um sounds a little flat almost in points, like minor. I want to say not flat as in the vocal quality is off. It just sounds there's a certain note in there that sticks out a lot more, and it's kind of building tension but you seem to use it throughout the entire song um <clears throat> i also kind of want vocals to hit a little harder once you get into like the pseudo drop it's very chill the drop but as someone who makes house i kind of want the drop to hit a little harder i want some arpeggios in there when the vocals aren't singing and um oh yeah another example for chords breaking them up you could play half the chord and the other half um, alternating. So you could, going back to that major seventh, you could use that to break up your chords a little bit. Um, what do you think of that one, uh, Clowns, for pop? Uh, for pop? I mean, that would work for pop, but I, what I heard did not sound like pop. It, it sounded more like jazz. It'd be, I mean, I I played on a Yamaha, and and that's what I would do with what I heard. And like I said, I only heard ten seconds, but yeah, the chord progression would definitely work if that's what you're going for pop. Um. But yeah, yeah. The chord what I heard did not sound like pop. Very simple. Yeah, and you want yeah you want to you want to keep it simple when you're doing uh, chord progressions for pop. I mean, you, yeah, thanks to extravagance, it doesn't really work out. That's why arpeggio, do you, do you hear arpeggio is kind of like what I was mentioning uh, at all in pop, really? No, you, we, I very seldom ever have to do it. I mean, I, I know how, it just 
we never do it that often. So yeah, if you're, if you're going we keep, for pop, we keep it very yeah. simplistic for a reason because people want simplistic. We try to get that complexity in like sound design, but never in like chord progressions, which I don't understand why. <laughs> and uh, if you ask Baco, I don't like simplicity. <laughs> nope. I mean, um, a little bit. and that's just because I was doing it for so many years, um, and now I just. I get a chance to like cut loose and do like insane stuff. Foot so loose, pop wise, I didn't shoes. hear pop in that. And, and, but that's the last 10 seconds. I really would love to get the link. If you can send it to me so I can listen to it. And uh, yeah, I can make... send you a direct message on what I think could change to make it more poppy. If that's the goal of it. <laughs> Come I know. Call me poppy. Yeah, I know. I, for me as well, pop music. I mean, I like some of it and then uh, but it's there were definitely like um, one of my favorite pop acts is um, someone who basically gets dubbed as baroque pop because she actually does use more interesting chord progressions and stuff in her music. Like it's not even like she's being crazy jazzy or anything, but just it's one step above standard pop music. And it's Florence and the Machine. And I love her work generally. She's got some really really cool stuff. Um, no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Next up, we have Honest by Oreg, although apparently that's not their actual artist name. No, half the people here don't have artist names. But it's, ooh, it's got vocals. Let's have a listen to this. Supposed to paint my kitchen walls gray, girl, but mine forgot. But I'm so bad at decisions. There's some stuff that I revert for you. A couple of weeks I've been down, and all my food's in my freezer. It's not living but surviving, doing groceries at the coin store. Goddamn, I wish I was better. Catch myself thinking when I'm sober Fuck, I've always been a failure Cause now I'm failing you So twisted in my mind and I don't know what to do I'm right by my phone, baby, call me You don't say the phone, baby, call me And how many times do I have to say I'm sorry Cause I'm sorry, baby
So, I'm going to hand off first to Mr. Hollow Weird here. Um, that was... Hey, no. No, Sam got stuff. Auto play! I'll at least All right, over to me first. Time. Okay, so... Um, so, uh, what did they want feedback on? Because um, I got some things to say. This one, um... They, um, didn't really give anything specific. Just, um... Just okay, give, well, I'll start with the poll polls then. Um... His art articulation was just not good. Um, it, I, the singing was fine, but they also kept singing with their mouth closed half the time. The other half they were singing from their throat, then the other half they're singing from their like. There's no consistent singing method here. Um, it sounds fine, unless you're trying to critique it. Um, but like, what really rubbed me the wrong way with the singing was how they were articulating uh, their vowels when they were singing their consonants when they were singing uh it was just like they were just sitting down and just letting it go however it lands uh music wise um the piano it it didn't sit right and i kind of know why it was the way the way the notes were constructed um you have two notes going off at the same time but they're not quite in sync they're just off and they're not in the right octaves. Um, so it just feels like it's off to me. Um, this needs a little bit of rework. I'd re-sing it and try to be get a consistent uh, style all the way through it, not keep changing it all the way up, all the way through. I mean, that's just, that would be my opinion. If I, if I saw a singer come into the studio and do this, I, I'm pretty sure that the engineer and producer would be like, let's do like 700 more takes. <laughs> oh, the pain, <laughs> the pain. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Baco, I think disagrees with me. Uh, go, <laughs> go for it, Baco. You, you handle vocals more than I do. I think the um, vocals are fine. Uh, I think extra takes of them would be really cool. Adding some layers to them would be really cool. They are way too high in the mix. Um, but overall, I think that the vocal takes all right. I think that it could do with a little bit of improvement if you wanted to put in the extra energy and effort. Um, it's, yeah, there's always room to improve. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it like conveyed a lot of emotion, but I feel like there it's, um, like the, mi like the elements are all there, but the mix wasn't quite. I was too distracted by the problems with the mix to be able to like get the message of the song. That's sort of what I'm saying. Um, so I think that's more of a, a level balancing kind of thing. And uh, using reference tracks again is always a good thing. So like find something that sounds similar to what you want to go for and then just match. Okay. The volume is here for the vocals. I'll try to be the same. The kick is over there and like um, uh, work your way down from that. Sonny. We talk um, I about. actually, I'm I'm singing right now to see how I uh, <laughs> what. <laughs> so I just saw you there. something like, that are you just vibing backo like you know oh this is backo's voice it's not actually coming out of his mouth it's coming out of yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually yeah, a just, team. just speak for me, you know. Um, I actually agree with Clown on the articulation of the vocals, and he reminded me that I still got I'm a, still a choir student at heart, you know. Uh, and something my choir teacher would always say, drop your jaw, you know? Um, what's another thing? From, from, instead of from, from, because it forces you to drop your jaw and open your mouth to get that O sound. Another thing that my choir teacher would always say, don't you speak with the Howard Hall voice, which is a, a elementary school, and a lot of people speak and sing like this, and she would over dramatize them. Um, I don't think you could quite have that bad, but you definitely have a very pressy kind of... Uh, tonality to your voice when you sing. Um, it's like maybe if, even if you had to sit a little further have, back, or their head voice, but haven't quite reached either. Right. Yeah, and I was I was actually singing what I was doing there was uh, pentatonics. Um, Hallelujah! Yeah, I, I was trying to see how I did it, and I was like, I heard there was a simple chord that David played, and it played. Oh yeah, I don't want to copyright. Got DMCA'd Anyways, for us, and. <laughs> But we lost our you Twitch gotta drop account. your jaw, you know. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> um, the vocal itself also felt really sharp at points. Um, something that uh, I've not, not actually liked about the lead singer for Pentatonix, I think his name is Smith, is he sounds like he's trying to almost force, like he's barely getting the words out. You know, he's almost kind of got to force the words out. Um, it sounds like he's struggling, and that's kind of what you had with your vocal as well. Um, especially with the breathiness kind of accents it as well. Otherwise, I did I did vibe with the song. You used plucks to fill in the background space. The pads really wide and mesh really well with the sounds that you have without being overshadowed or being lost in the mix. So you've actually got some really good stuff going on here. Um, as for solving the vocal, if you just wanted to process it, I think maybe a multi-band compressor, uh, compressing that high end a little bit, especially at the very intro, where you get like the hya, so whatever it is that you have, or de-essing it might help a lot, especially with the reverb, it really accents those S's in there, and it's really sharp to the ears. So am I the only one that had a problem with the piano? No, I think your advice is um, good. I, I was paying a lot more attention to other things, unfortunately, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, yeah, that was that was actually my biggest problem with it, and then the articulation. But yeah, um, sorry, I the You're piano fine. really rubbed me the wrong way on that, <laughs> like really bad. It was it'd be one I'd be writing to uh, whoever composed it, and be like, no, do not do it this way. <laughs> um, I don't know why it really it just I know the effect they were going for. It just they did it wrong. I mean, it's one of those things where you have to sort of comp it until you get each section right. The transitions are especially hard um, because you yeah. want to go from like your the, your core voice all the way up to your head voice in like one smooth motion. You want to go like, ah, but like get up to that really high note because I can't remember what that high note was uh, because that's the, that it's a really annoying transition to do and you have to just keep doing it until you do it right. Because right. otherwise, something yeah. something I've been taught is especially when you have big note jumps like that um, you don't actually want to slide uh, in a choir when you have four different voices or more sometimes it's SATB sometimes it's SAATDBB um, you gotta really nail those notes whenever you jump up an octave or something like that you can just slide up to you have to really nail it but that's that's choir that's not pop singing that's not this and it's, it's just something that comes to mind. Well, you made me so think boring. of my choir teaching. <laughs> oh, we cursed you. We cursed you. And you got yeah, all this nostalgia. Like, I don't want to be that picky on that song, because I actually I like the lyrics. The lyrics are great. And that's something I, I never hear you guys talk about, is, like, lyric uh, composition. Like, it's because I don't write lyrics. <laughs> uh, the lyric composition in this is actually pretty pretty well thought out. Like, that was probably my favorite part of the whole song, was the lyrics. My I problem did is, a great job. I have sometimes a hard time remembering what the lyrics were from when we listen to something, and then I'm trying to think back of what. You know, sometimes, if someone says a really snappy line, I'm like, yes, perfect. Um, but, like this one, for example, because the first time hearing it, like there's so much going on that's brand new to me that I can't remember every single word that was said, kind of thing. I mean, nothing sounded mm -hmm. off in terms of, you know, phrasing. Which is good, but like I literally couldn't tell you what they were singing about. <laughs> uh, I was paying attention to what he was saying because the articulation was really bad, and <laughs> it, I really started like it really like stuck. But the lyrics are really good. Like I'm like, dude, I want to get this guy in the studio and have him record it like 50 times and get this right. That's awesome. what I really want to do. Like it's a really yeah. good song. Vocal um, clarity is really important. Uh, yeah. A lot of times, um, reverb and effects and processing can actually uh, muddy up your vocal, uh, your vocal, which is why you have to... I almost want to say you want to overpronounce everything you sing because of all the stuff that gets added. It allows people to understand what you're still saying even when you add or remove frequencies from your vocal. Am I correct there? Overpronouncing your vocals to make sure it sticks yeah. out oh. and is still intelligible? Yep. Especially although, if you're doing pop. I mean, you have to do that in pop. Although, you could do, there are plenty of examples I can think of where they don't, like, the chain smoke, yeah, for, that's, for example. It, <laughs> well, that's that's a hy that's hybrid pop. By also. nothing, by well, chain smokers, nothing. It's like, you know, the problem with the chain smoker, especially when the um, Drew, I think it is, does his own, like, one of them, the pair that does sing on some of their songs, um, 
I don't think he has formal vocal training. Or he, if he does, it's like very minimal. Um, and so it's sort of half the time he's trying to sort of sing like he would speak. Yeah, but that, that's kind of the charm of them, too. I mean, that's why it's called hybrid. I mean, that's why it's hybrid. I mean, uh, they're really good with the, the audience, too. So that kind of built built them up, but too. I mean, um, I think that that sort of track here is right now being very influenced by that in terms of how he's trying to sing it. But Do then you? I think he mainly, you know, we talk about referencing all the time. Let's talk about vocal referencing. Go listen to Chris Martin from Coldplay. Go jump between low and high notes. Oh man, yeah, that's a good reference. I mean, it's like a cheesy as fuck it, reference, but it's a good reference. <laughs> don't 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 I'm copy a song a reference. Just, don't copy his songwriting. <laughs> just look at his. No, you can do more than two chords. No, no, I have no problem with I have no problem with Chris. <laughs> There's a reason why. <laughs> I'm gonna send him my sh stuff and be like, here, did I sing it like you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, I've worked with a lot of people in the industry, and I, I've actually opened up for Coldplay at one point. So it's like, uh, and he's he's hilarious, by the way. I am just absolutely <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and he yeah, would like, mock. He mocked. He mocked my singing. He does not mock my playing ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, referencing vocals, yeah, that that works. But you also have to mimic what they're the the style in which they're doing it and how they're doing it like are they using their mouth are they using their throat their diaphragm where where is the where's it coming from and that's yeah. something that I as people are just getting into music they don't understand how all that stuff uh, clicks together and, and I and then I you know have like, that uh, one vocal where someone's like, uh, like Baco just looks at oh I can probably fix this <laughs> I, I know that's what Baco's looking at yeah. And my, I'm, 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 actually, I'm from the record until you get it right. Uh, yeah, category. I, I've worked with a lot of really scuffed vocals, so I'm like, this is totally workable. I could do this. <laughs> yeah, and then, but I would look at it and go, yeah, dude, just go re-record it. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I go off the, you know, if I cannot pull it off, that I need, either need to rewrite it or keep practicing it. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's a good way to take it. it. Yeah, and this is one of those songs that really, that's where they, they need to look at it and go, can I pull this off correctly? If they can't, then rewrite it. But the lyrics are great. I love the lyrics. I mean, the lyrics are absolutely fantastic. I mean, if I wrote those lyrics, I'd be proud of them. I mean, it's a good song, but, like, there's just little things that could put this in, like... It, 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 there's a difference between... The top 1,000 and the top 100. And this song sitting right now with all the problems that it has, it's, it's not even going to break the top 1,000. Um, but if you fix those problems, this thing could easily hit top 100 easy. Well, and that's, that's what people... Good place to that's be. That's high praise, even though it comes with a little spoonful of, like, this is not perfect. <laughs> I mean, but that's what, that's what it comes down to. Those little things that that make a top 1,000 song or a top 100 song are just little things that that artists do different. And if you put the time in, this this guy could definitely be in the top 100 easily. Um, it's just, it's all about the commitment to it. I mean, well, let's hope we can all join him in the top 100. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> At least not to me. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> Uh, Baco, don't sell yourself short. Uh, you have you make some really good music. Um, I actually like your music. So, what Thank was you your nickname again? Back Mine, Baco Bits. Yeah, Baco Bits. Yeah, Baco Bits. Yeah. All right, let's uh, keep going. Next, yeah, let's right. keep going. Next second, one, let's go. We have a, a few more second submissions, including by Mister Hollow Weird. Um, next up, we have Nathan Van Denberg with Anomaly. And Ooh. did they have? Any I've heard this one. I've heard this one. Yeah, I think I don't know if I've heard this one, but let's find out. I've heard it.
You said you finally finished it? It's definitely finished. Agreed. That's done. Start submitting yeah. that somewhere. <laughs> or release it, or whatever. I heard this a, I heard this a couple of days ago, and um, they, were, they were shopping it around a little bit. And I still, like, I, t I told you the other day, like, dude, why, why was it privated? Um, it was just so, it, it, it's just good. Like, how do you critique something like this other than, dude, release it. Release it. Yeah, man. That's, that's my <laughs> critique. My critique you of it all is of us that moving. you need to all of us. decide that music is done and move on and make some more stuff like this. Because I want to hear an album of this shit. <laughs> Yeah, how do you critique something like this? Like, you can't. It's, it's well, done. Well, it's at the point where it doesn't need to. I think that's it. Yeah. You're done. It's like, it's like Asnodel's, my friend, he freaking has Centauri, which is like the most amazing fucking color base song I've ever heard in my life. Like, release it. Like, your color base is going to fall out of favor, and you're going to miss the window. <laughs> yep. Like, this, this is really good. Wait, well, he sent it to labels. Awesome. Yeah. Yay, good luck. Good luck, man. I hope that you get it. We're rooting for you. And Good if track. not, release it yourself. Fancy, fun, nice vibes. I think, yeah, definitely release worthy for sure. And I wouldn't just send it to labels. I'd get it in, into DJ's hands, into some DJ's yeah, hands. Yeah, so no demo? Yeah, yeah I was get, thinking of a that, club mix. That like, would definitely work really well. That's what you need to do with this. Like, this, you get some DJ's doing this, you, you can blow up really pretty fast okay, imagine if he um, said it was inspired by armin van buren imagine if he could get armin van yeah. buren to play that <laughs> to spin his track that'd be so cool yeah that's my i want Artie to spin one of my tracks sometime i mean like, one, a state of once. trance i think is his compilation series that he does yeah state of trance yeah. you can submit to them too yeah so maybe it's worth a shot like, I, I gave you the same chance. critique i gave last time uh get this thing out i mean like people need to hear it like you everybody's gonna be moving to it it, it's really good. Sonny, come on. Let's hear your your feedback on this. <laughs> it's it's ready, man. You know, the song I sent in today is, is going to sound a little unpolished, and that's because I got to the point where I was like, I've spent too much time on this song. I'm going to start a new project. And I left it in the state it's in, and listening to it back, I'm like, ooh. But this song is not in a state where it's unpolished. You've spent all the time you need to, I think. Um... Sure, there might be things that we aren't trained enough to pick out, maybe. If a professional studio, you know, someone who is, like, world-renowned for being really good at sound engineering might be able to still pick apart this track. But I can't, and neither can these guys. Well, I could probably pick we're out... We're not your average listeners, you know? So, you're, you're good, I, man. I'm at the point where I'm like, you know, yeah, you could keep polishing forever, but, like, what's the point? <laughs> There's a, the, well, yeah, yeah, you know? polishing, like, the things I would suggest for this... Have nothing to do with making it better, and like, if it's not gonna make it better, there's no no point to it. Like, this is good. It's just good. Yeah, you're ready to go, man. It's not even so. good. It's great. It's a, it's a great piece. Like, if everybody brought pieces in like this, this stream would not exist. At <laughs> all. That's not oh, that so true. <laughs> that, is, that is so true. So it's nice to hear something like this on like these streams. And I heard this the other day. Um, it was amongst a bunch of unpolished stuff. Even my stuff is up there. And this still sounds better than my stuff. Um, so, I mean, dude, bravo. Next uh, up we Let's move on to the next. Sunny Skies is the second entry, and then you, Mr. Weird. Yeah, Sunny. You're, you're the l closing track for tonight. How do you feel? Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to end with some comedy. Awesome. <laughs> so real quick before the, my song plays mm -hmm, this is, um, this you guys ever see those memes where someone's like hey let's work on a song and then you make the entire song yeah that happens to me a lot yeah that's what happened with this one the guy sent me the, the dulcimer intro that you have as well as a synth swell I picked up the microphone went like let me do something with this and then turned it into an entire song yeah, I had to wait beer. weeks for him to eventually get his vocals in. You'll actually hear them in the second half of the song. Uh, but other than that, it is unfortunately mostly me. Well, 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 unfortunately, it isn't a bad. I mean, mostly. You, I, I've heard some of your stuff. It's not. You're not horrible, so 
No yeah, I'm not negativity. amazing either, though. No and I negativity. wouldn't mind revisiting this track, you know? No negativity. I'm, I'm fully expecting you to rip into this song, so go crazy, man. Uh, you want me to roast you? <laughs> okay. I will try my right. best. The storm is calling. Definitely better than my nice. singing, so. <laughs> Again. Oh yeah, uh, who's going first? Yeah, I want that Nathan to go first. All right. Um, Come on. Well, They're into it, people. There is no draw. Give me your worst. Oh. Auto play. Oh, Auto play. you do not want that song coming after uh, that. Right, that was um, Silver Notes. Um, rain boom, I think. Yeah. It's something um, like that. Sonic I know rain the artist. Boom. Anyway. Um, Sonic Rainbow. I assume it's something pony music by some chance. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pony. Everything is pony music, secretly. Oh, uh, yep. I mean, um, the problem is, right now, this track is trying to be generic dubstepy pony music. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, there it is. There it is, there's your roast. Um, and there's no drop. So you're already, um, this track is already failing at that objective there. I mean, you have lots of constant build-up, but then you just sort of keep building up, and you go, but in a different way. Like, you have that... Yeah, there's no rising, release. Yeah, there's no release at all throughout the entire track. And while the most... Your vocal work is fine, but it's ill-served by the instrumental underneath. Yeah, you you have the problem with this instrumental, and Baco will understand this. Um, and because me and Baco were dealing with this last week. 
Um, I need a separation between my stuff. You have the opposite problem. Your stuff is so separated that it, it just it's an it doesn't feel like a cohesive whole. Yeah. Right. It's, it's probably something to do with the EQing. When I started producing, I often EQed everything in its own area, so that the sub was always separated from the bass. The bass was always separated from everything else, well, and everything was separated from the bass. You have little things that are going on too. You have you have things going on that just pop out of nowhere and just don't even seem like they're even part of the song. And it's just like um, you you say variation is key on this one. I think you took it too far. Um, all right, you need to pull right. back a little bit. Um, this is where I said if you go too far, you end up with a mess. And in this case, I think you ended up with you went way beyond the variation for success. Like you I need to pull that. it back and tighten it up, strip things away. Like I could easily like uh, play over this, but if I played over it, I'd I'd play in a way that would drown out ninety percent of what you have there. Um, yeah, and all the little bits would go to waste in that point. Right, and you have some interesting ear candy stuff, but they're not used as ear candy. They're, they're not coming through like that. They're they're coming through as oh, I just had this idea and it's now here. That's what it felt like. I, Sorry. um, the the playing was fine. I, and like the MIDI that you did for, I think it's a piano. I think I I don't know. Uh, you talking about the the drop? It's an organ. Uh, is that an organ? Yeah. That, yeah, it's an you, organ. You it's might a want to organ. EQ it better. It doesn't sound like an organ. Um, it just it sounds off, and the playing it it's kind of like it doesn't feel fluid. Um, it, but this is the problem I had with my guitar playing is I'm so tight knit that it all feels like one guitar when it should be stripped and, and separated out. And Baco understands that. I that's one of the things we were dealing with, right, Baco? Yep. Yeah, um, so it's just a matter of separating. But, I mean, you did say this is eight months ago, and I am a completely different person than I was eight months ago in terms of the, my music and what I was producing. Um, you evolve oh. quite quickly over time, especially if you're iterating a lot. Um, I think it just needs – you need if you want to rework this, then I would probably just, like, take the core elements that you like again and try rebuilding the track. Um, mm -hmm. I, it's not – that I'm saying, like, you should totally turf the whole thing, but, like, your skill and knowledge that you have now will give you insights that you didn't even know you had, uh, or that you could have had um, eight months ago. So, um, and it's always a really good, um, like, uh, like, sort of skill, like, development thing to, like, rework old stuff that you have um, and, like, sort of start with a fresh slate because then you can take the core idea and execute it um, in a way that you are... Um, like more excited about yeah i mean like I've, i heard your stuff last week and it was great like yeah this, what like, did i submit last week i don't uh, remember oh it was the guitar wasn't it yeah that was yeah really, that was that was that's really the good. most recent thing i've made or like, no actually the melodic dubstep i think i'm, on, is the most I'm recent, with but... on that like you need to revisit this and like strip it down pull out all those extra all the ear candy and start all over and so see the big things up. The big things I really liked about this song was the build-up with the the vocals. I just had me going oh over and over again on the microphone, um, building more of that as the draw or as it progresses, and also the harmonies in the bass line. Do you think that those would be elements I could definitely keep and throw into a new song? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you the, the thing is, is you like them and like go with your instinct and try to implement them better than you did in this. That's what I would do. I mean, All right. Like this, it could be reworked. It, 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 any song can be saved, um, and that's something that um, I don't see a lot of streamers saying. Like, there is no such thing as a bad song. There's bad development and bad follow through. Um, this definitely can be saved. It's just you got to put the time in. Yeah, yeah. As I said, this song was at twelve hour work time. I was like, I can't figure out how to get this song to work any better than it is. So I'm just gonna drop it for now, revisit it at a later time when I'm better, and start making new songs. And there that's you exactly go. what you're and doing. That is exactly what I plan to do. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. awesome. Here I, I am, eight, eight, like eight months later. Weeks. I want to see it in two or three weeks. Yeah, man. No. All right. Spend sure, more guys. than twelve hours on it. Spend more than twelve hours on it. That's the big thing. Is like I try not to like show people stuff anymore that like i have because i used to do that a lot where it'd be like oh i made this in one night like check it out it's so cool and it's like you're not putting the time in like <laughs> you gotta put in the time you gotta put it more than an hour like a night <laughs> uh, i have like two people i subject oh, yeah. day one whips to 
<laughs> yeah, and it's like the, they they have to be like close people that are willing to hear your garbage. <laughs> Pretty much. I don't know. That's like, yeah, what, what I've been doing good. for the last year and a half. Oh yeah, yeah. did well, I mention good. keyboard on the keyboard over there, Nathaniel? Keyboard on the keyboard. keyboard Let's go. Keyboard on the keyboard. Yeah. Oh, I was hoping the RGB would shine up more, but it's not really doing a very good job of that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because because you're bad. I got all oh, this RGB, your roast but nobody for the day. can see it. Okay, so my next track is just one I I my my son bought a cursed piano. Oh, boy. and this is me playing on the cursed piano. I added oh, wow. a, I added a little bit of um, I was doing a just skits and stuff, and so there's a little little bit of that in there, and it, it was gonna end up going into a skit that I never ended up doing, but I actually really liked the playing on it. So yeah, go for it. Try to rip this one apart, boys. <laughs> yeah, okay. let's let's rip this one apart, guys. Eliza Piano. <laughs> uh, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm getting. There. Um. No. Almost. Uh, wait, no, no, I swear I can. Uh, um. Maybe it's soft because I'm not playing on Clouds' piano. Oh, shit. How did it go again? Um. <laughs> this piano sounds like it hasn't been tuned in decades! Or did you do something to it, clowns? I think I've got it. You were the one for me. Uh, oh, shit, how did it go again? Mm -hmm. Oh, forget this. Clowns can do it better. I'll leave it up to him. Well, why didn't you chip into the playing? Oh, right. Probably should have taken the ball gag out of your mouth. Hmm. Well, if you want something done right, you better do it yourself. Hmm. Eliza, you're making me feel like a fool. <laughs> Actually got it that time. <laughs> what are you doing with the key? What are you looking at me like that for? You think you could do it better? Me. <laughs> oh God! Oh play. What? <laughs> So, Hyperpop, this is what it feels like to listen to Hyperpop. I understand now, and I'm sorry. Okay? I'm sorry. It's, it's amazing, okay? It's incredible. You took me I on the journey. It. it was too the much for words part to say. Really got me, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, so I write skits, and I was, I was putting them on SoundCloud, and then I stopped putting them up there, and this is... This is from one of the skits. <laughs> and then I, I just like, I got I got to put it on. So um, this is intentionally bad playing, uh, but if anybody with a good ear will realize, it's actually really good playing. Like 
it's play so bad, bad system. When you try and deliberately play bad as a really high level professional, yeah, that's actually difficult. Like, uh, right. I think you were telling me about um, you were trying to play something off and you literally just picked up your cat, put treats on yourself, and then let your cat climb on you while you tried to yes. play the, play yes. the part. <laughs> yes, and break me. Yes. I put treats in on, while I'm playing, I had treats in uh, right where the elbow is, put treats right there and just started playing. And he attacked me, and that's how I got. That's how I got it. <laughs> oh boy! I can't Why play I bad. I have, all, <laughs> and that was my attempt at trying to play bad. <laughs> um, I'm good. At, I'm good at playing bad. <laughs> I still got to do a little more work. But yeah, I don't think there's much criticism for the song. The skit it was more of a skit than a song, but it was definitely yeah. It's definitely a skit. It was definitely yeah, yeah. a skit. <laughs> Um, I have a song called game. Eliza that you guys haven't heard. Um, Baco has heard it. Um, yeah, it's a good one. It's this is me mocking that song. Oh, <laughs> that's really meta. Yep. I know. Um... It's so crazy that it sticks out so much. You see, this is genius advertising. You hear this wacko of a song. You're like, who makes this? On his front page is the song he was making a mockery of. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. So it's just a way to divert your attention, catch yep. your attention. You're like, whoa, what the f is this? You go and listen to his actual songs, and then you're like, whoa, this is incredible. You're a genius, man. You, your IQ has no limits. I am just <laughs> awestruck by your ingenuity. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and that's it for the day. So, I mean, that was an interesting note to end the stream. Oh, my camera died. I guess that's a thing that happened. Um... Uh, it's definitely time to end the stream then. My camera is officially dead. It ran out of charge. Well, good timing. Good timing. Um, first up, I'd like to... Yeah, camera says stream over. Um, thank you very much to Sunny Skies, Back of Bezo, and the Clowns of Hollow Weird. Or I, Clown of Hollow Weird? I, I feel like I've said your name wrong now. Um, Clowny Weirdy. Mr. Clowny Weirdy. We need a nickname for him. If it's Back of Bits... <laughs> Mr. Sunshine. Weirdy clowning? Yeah, clowns in hollow weird. But um, thank you very much, everybody, for joining me this evening. If anyone watching would like to join me next week, please DM me on either Twitter or Discord, and I will hook you up with little links to jump in in your web browser or on your camera. Um, if you want to come back again, you're addicted. <laughs> Sonny's addic uh, what have we done? We've broken Sunny. He's addicted to streaming now. Yeah. You should start streaming. I'm gonna become a professional streamer now. It's fun. Uh, oh, I wouldn't try to be a professional at it. It's oh not God. easy to do that. <laughs> I do good at it. I mean, um, I stream occasionally. I was thinking of streaming on Friday on my own channel, playing Rocket League or something. But um, and it'll give me a good chance to shake down my laptop because it seems to be more stable now, so I can get away with it. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, but I mean, um, we've got one more thing to do, everybody. And while nobody can yep. see me on the camera. I'm ready. And that is say good night. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yes. Good night.